Welcome back to EW Legal Series. Nowadays, networking is so important, so important to the point that 80% of jobs are formed through networking. This means anyone in any job can form career progression through networking. If this sort of thing interests you, head over to my career development page, Law Students Unite. into it tip number one is research the people you know are going to the networking event this is all about preparation this optimizes your time effectively and definitely makes the networking more worthwhile if you research it means you can have conversation starters with them on stuff that you research about them you may find that one of the people you're researching, you might have something hugely in common with them that you can connect with and that you can relate to that person on a similar level. Uh, this happened to me actually. I went to a networking event in first year and I researched one of the partners of a criminal firm that I knew was going to be there. And through researching, I actually realised that she was a fundraiser for a voluntary organisation I worked at and we connected on that and then she gave me her business card. If you actually go out your way to research them and find things in common with them then they're more likely to remember you. Be genuine. When you're researching someone and you feel like perhaps you don't have anything in common with them then don't go out your way to find something in common with them just to talk to them about the great thing about networking events is that they can be informal conversations or formal conversations you really can suit it to your needs you may be intrigued about their practice area or their role what they enjoy doing their fave aspects and so on so if you don't connect on a personal level to that person it's probably best to keep some formal questions in the back of your head what i always found useful doing walking to the networking event i used to write questions that I would just think of in my head on the spot on my memo and then they were fresh in my head so that I could ask those questions to those people and they were just general questions like formal um, but obviously if you're used to networking events and you go to them over time you do build confidence and questions just naturally formulate in your head and you won't really have to prepare anymore but if this is your first time going to a networking event it's definitely mindful to prepare for it. However, I will just make an important point. You do have to be careful with some of the questions you're asking, especially barristers do get quite annoyed, quite frustrated with the questions that are being asked because they're either so misunderstood or so basic that they're not really worth asking. And often the question they get asked is, how can you do what you do? It's because the nature of the role and what I've gauged from it they're actually fact teasing but I think the biggest misconception is that they come across as these evil people who are out to get the victim and that's that's so the opposite. Number three, know the dress code. I think it's pretty common sense. If there is no dress code, you usually dress smart to casual. This long summer dress would, would not be appropriate. I would say either a suit or a long dress for a, for a woman. When you sign up to a networking event online, you usually get the details and I think often some people are so excited that they've got accepted into the networking event that they completely forget about all the minor details. Number four, and this is an important one, don't just make it about you and what you want, use them to your mutual advantage. And what I mean by this is sometimes it can show genuine intrigue and a person will probably like you more if they're benefiting out of the situation as well. So instead of saying at the end of a conversation, can you offer me work experience or do you offer work experience? You could probably say something like, I'm really interested in this area actually and would like to learn more about it. Is there any admin work that I could help you with either online or in person to get me to learn a bit more about it? Now much more likely if you use a softer approach and a more genuine intrigue approach um, to offer you work experience. 
Number five, conversation starters are important. Of course, how you look is going to make an impression, but also how you approach someone is going to make an impression. I think this is pretty straightforward. Um, what I've done in the past and seems to work in engaging with conversation and what I feel is just sort of a tactical, normal approach to it is walking up to them saying, hi, my name's Ellie, Nice, really nice to meet you. Uh, I really enjoyed your talk if they gave one. If they don't have a name badge on, ask them for their name, but obviously they, you should know their name really. And then just talk a bit about, you know, you could ask them what brought you to this event, start with the basics, and then say why you're at this event and what you want to learn and get out of it. And then just get into a conversation really about, you know, their practice areas and things like that. If they do give talks, it requires you to listen, especially if you haven't prepared in advance. If you haven't prepared before, it will give you something to actually talk about. Number six, at the end of a conversation, ask for a business card. A lot of people do take these two events, but not everyone will just single-handedly, you know, give them out. If they don't have a business card, still ask. Uh, they might alternatively give you their email or phone number. Make sure you take like a small notepad um, and a pen. I would say obviously getting out your phone is easier, but it doesn't look as professional. Number seven, always follow up after a networking event. This could be the evening of the networking event or the day after. You may ask why this is important. Well, it's important because imagine the amount of people that these professionals are actually meeting at network events. It might be very easy to forget you. Sometimes it's not a good idea to get what you want out of the connection when it suits you. Um, so what would be a good idea is, for instance, if you didn't want work experience just yet, you're quite busy, but you wanted it in a few months' time, when it does suit you, a good idea would be to follow up saying something like, hi, it was really nice to meet you check this article out or check this out what do you think sometimes you've got to bear in mind that something a date that suits you might be inconvenient for them at the time if you've already arranged work experience you can say something like would it be great to discuss the opportunity to do some work with you and then give them some dates be proactive in your approach a networking event is not just for food and drink and to relax you're going there for a reason and it's not just about talking to people it's about making opportunity and making connections try to speak to as many people as you can and do not leave until you feel satisfied that you've got what you want number nine this is a very important one create a linkedin profile this is the number one job profile engaging networking site it's sort of like an a formal facebook for professionals so you're building connections based upon people you don't know to learn more about the industry they're in and to connect to different people and also to get inspiration it's also like a cv you can post all your achievements your grades it's also a platform where you can post your views and engage with other people's views and comments it's the best platform for actual networking events they post a lot they post a lot of online networking events that you literally can just turn up to you save the link or, or you register and it is it really is as easy as that it's also a great platform to get to know someone better sometimes you can't get, always get through to people on email, but it tells you when someone's read something on LinkedIn, a bit like Facebook. So it'd be a good way to follow up with that person. I think an important point to make actually about LinkedIn is that it doesn't matter if you don't know people. That's the whole point. This is how it differs from Facebook. It's all about, you know, not knowing people and, and getting to know them. That's the whole point of networking. So... I think people get scared in that sense of not making connections based on the fact you don't know them because they're so used to the format of Facebook but really just really just put yourself out there. Last but not least, be confident. I think this is easier said than done, especially if you're kind of an introverted, shy person who's not that used to social interaction. However, preparation is key, so if you come prepared then I think naturally you're sort of have that more confident approach to 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 professionals <music>